We're going to talk about a strategy to help you process difficult emotions, something called RAIN. So full, full disclosure, where I get a lot of my stuff from and, and I just, I make it my own. There is no copy and I go from a guide and I always give reference to where it goes, right? Like I pick up a book, I like my, you know, time and I make it my, my, you know, change it to myself, my, my way and in, in my teaching. Um, and give credit to where credit's due. So I recommend picking up, you know, a guide full, pick up the guide, right? Where coaching and the stuff I believe is is the connection and how somebody can change the words around to help people understand, right? Because sometimes you can read something and the interpretation is different than when you hear somebody else say it. And sometimes you need to hear it over and over again from different perspectives. So that's where, you know, and that's sometimes too, even just watching the videos versus being in a coaching program versus having somebody help you, right? That is very, very different things. So, you know, full disclosure is where I, I got this concept from and I'm, I'm teaching it and, and turn around and this is my perspective and views on it. So this RAIN strategy, I go, okay, I, I like it because I, I myself have been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD. Um, full disclosure, after a lot of my own training and practice and, you know, putting a, a lot of theories to test for a number of years, I'd say a lot, a lot of the diagnosis, um, yes, it's true that I had those things, how, how they are believed to come about though, I challenge, um, because I've, I recognize that a lot of it's been wrong. It's uncomfortable for us so often to sit with our own thoughts. And that's why di processing difficult emotions is a difficult thing, right? It is a difficult thing. And a lot of times when we're so distracted is because we don't have those coping mechanisms. So many times with ADD and ADHD, it's easier for our brain to, to go somewhere else to be distracted than it is to deal with the difficult emotions. Most, it's a fight or flight response. Most people want to check out. And so many people aren't equipped with the tools to be able to help them so that they can stay focused. And that's a big misconception of ADD and ADHD in the first place. That's, on, that's, a top, that's another topic. So RAIN, RAIN uh, is a good strategy to help you cope with that. So what is RAIN? First off, recognizing what's going on. So take for the example, I myself, um, I struggled with a lot of social anxiety uh, when I was in high school, but you wouldn't recognize that. I'm a, I have to look back and I go, I was an exceptional chameleon. So naturally became a performer. I could perform, I could do things, a natural people pleaser. However, my internal dialogue and the things I was experiencing were very different. So that brought out social anxiety. So when I was in social situations, I was actually, my, my response is a lot and my drug of choice. Uh, I myself have never taken a drug in my life, but and I, and I don't judge anyone who has because it has a lot to do with how our brain and, and the things that have gone on operate. So eating disorders have the same kind of effect as somebody like, a, like an addict. I understand that. My drug of choice was food. So when I'm in a situation where I felt uncomfortable, not worthy, the dialogue going in my head or whatever else, the cravings would take over. Why? Well, that's a major distraction. It's like a major distraction because it's other un undeveloped things, right? Also, I get into a lot of, um, because I have other training and coaching that we talk about in body reflection, how specific, specific foods specific can be triggers and it actually links to our past and our memories and different things and sometimes we have to actually recognize them so our, our, our cravings there they can be a lot more complex than people really recognize so when we're saying oh my gosh I, I you know I can't lose weight or why am I craving this donut all the time or I'm out of control or, or whatever else there's a, there's a lot of other things going on so forgive yourself is the first thing just be aware that it's a lot more complex than you recognize our brains are really computers that need to be reprogrammed we've you have to think we've programmed this however old you are right that's this lifetime however old you are in this lifetime so right now as i do this video i'm 38 years old right so as i do this video right now i'm programming for 38 years but guess what my brain your brain is a part of my parents brain who's a part of their parents brain is a part of their that our brains are actually millions of years old that have been programmed for so long, right? So many people don't really recognize that. Then you have society, then you have everything else going on. So this is, a, this is a very complex computer. So be a little bit more forgiving to yourself. So RAIN, recognizing what's going on. Notice the kind of thoughts that come up in a situation 
right? When you're feeling anxious and anxi- or, or if different emotions, right? And so many times, like food is a, is a big thing. Or saying, well, why am I craving this? Ah, right? Or I'm, I'm not on this. I started a new diet. And sometimes the diet itself is actually what triggers you into having because you're restricted. But it's recognizing, recognizing what's going on. First, identifying what you're feeling, what your thoughts are. So when I was in those situations, right, I wasn't able at the time to do it. Looking back, I can now and go, wow, right? I had massive social anxiety. I didn't feel like I belonged. So it was easier for my brain to cope, right? To, to, go, to go, oh, there, where's the food? And, and be so, and believe at the time, genuinely, like I was so hungry all the time that I would have to, and then I would eat these foods and then my stomach would get sick, right? I would generally be eating things at the time, right? I even worked through, I used to have the most, it was hospitalized for all my food intolerances on, on so many levels and I actually was able to heal those things too. So there's a, there's a lot of misconceptions with a lot of stuff, but we don't talk about that. But it, because recognizing how powerful the brain is, that's why I'm saying that, how powerful the, our brain is and how much of an effect it has on us. It is such, such, such a powerful thing. So being aware of our thoughts and situations is the first, is the first thing. So recognizing, right? First, uh, number one, you want to recognize, okay, so how does your body feel right now? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling, so just being aware, okay, in these th- moments, so you might not be able to in this time, right? Because as you're first learning these skills to do anything with it, you're just recognizing that that's an existence. Okay, my, I'm sweating, I'm anxious, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm, I, I'm pacing, I, I can't, ah, right? Okay, just recognizing it. Again, these are things that take practice, a long time. It took me years, so be patient. Um, a, allow all of those thoughts, feelings, and physical sensations to simply be as they are. Really trying to not judge that. And it's, it's a tough thing. It really is a tough thing. You know, we, we, we're so hard on ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. You know, to be human is to be imperfect. And we spend so much time trying to create this falsehood and of perfection. So what? So people would love us more? So we can fit in more? The only person you need to fit in with is you first. Then you find your people. And that's a, you know, for people that have big family, they, that's an easier concept for somebody like myself to grasp after being abused. But for, for a lot of people who, you know, you know, this is my family, this is what it is, right? It, it, that can be a hard thing to really understand, right? Because we feel the need to please so many people around us but or, or fit in with those people. But maybe you weren't meant to fit in. That's why you have to find your own way first, right? So sometimes when we have an unpleasant experience, our first impulse is to judge them and then try to fix and change them, of course. But give yourself the space to be with those uncomfortable feelings without without trying to change them. Feel whatever's coming up and just let them be as it is. You don't have to, you, you don't have to like or agree with what's going on just soften the resistance to it and allow it to arise and pass through. Allow it. Painful. Might be painful. I had to go through a process. It was almost, I would say I would equate it to almost like a two year detoxing process where it was pretty much pure hell, right? So I was like, a lot of people go, oh, I don't wanna go through that. I myself just had a lot of trauma that it had to be cleansed out of my body and I recognize that that comes when, when you're, it comes with physical symptoms. When you're, cl- when you relive trauma or bad memories or past, it actually will come with physical symptoms, with physical things. And the human brain and body and all that, right? We're, our brain is meant to keep us safe in survival. It's not meant to run toward pain. So if you've had a painful experience, our brains generally shut down especially at the time that it happened. But eventually it's going to come up and bite you in the butt and you're going to have to deal with it. That's actually what, you know, form like PTSD, but you know, in a way like that's trauma. In a way we all have some sort of PTSD. 
because we've all had something that's happened to us that our brains have shut out for some reason that comes back. So instead of being so judgmental and harsh on yourself, maybe be a little bit more forgiving and understanding because that's maybe what your body needs to work through. I investigate your experience with a sense of kindness. Ask yourself, what is calling my attention most right now? What is it? What is calling my attention most right now? How am I experiencing it in my body? What is the story I am telling myself about it? And is it really true? What do I need right now? What do I honestly need right now? You know, most people don't spend any time thinking about these things So how and, and, and investigating this. So how is anything ever going to get fixed? We just expect things to be fixed or, right? Or, you know, we've maybe had a life where people have, if you've been blessed where, you know, you've had a great mom and a dad and family and people have been taking care of you and you haven't really had to worry about finances or different things, right? When, when life throws you a curveball, you're going to be really thrown off your game. Other people maybe that have, you know, circumstances where they've had to kind of fend on their own when different things come up, they go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. And they're, they can adapt quicker. Depends. Depends. It depends on what self-help work each person in those circumstances has done. Either way, it comes back to the individual being the responsible one. You. You. Not N for, so rain, not N. Um, non-identifying, non-identifying with the thoughts and feelings. Not, so not, not identifying with the thoughts and the feelings, not making it your identity. If you observe these thoughts and feelings for any period of time, you'll see that you're constantly, you know, a roller coaster of emotions and ups and downs and thoughts, right? Like that's, that's actually normal. Traditionally, women are just where we're used to be right with emotion. So we just kind of go, oh, that's hormones. Well, that's not necessarily true. All right. That's just an easy excuse to pass off. Right. And traditionally, men, traditionally, not always, but traditionally have been more right. So but it's a difference in thoughts. Thoughts that make us can make us really go up and down. Yes, there's other factors that come into play. Well, why? Well, that's chemistry in the body and different things. But the thoughts are what can impact so many other things. But we are we are not our thoughts, right? That's just, this is a different thing. So if you learn how to identify your thoughts and your feelings, and you know, with without judgment, and you're gonna be in a very different place, observing. So can you look at them from a different perspective? Somebody else's perspective. Can you wear somebody else's shoes and look at the situation from an outsider in? That'll change a lot. Yeah. Um, so from this perspective, try to observe and experience whatever is going on without getting caught up in it and simply allow the space for things to pass through you. Okay. Have you... Here, sorry, here you are calling on an aspect of your mind that can observe what's going on as if you were watching a movie without being too involved in it. But really, how often do you watch a movie and then you become one of the characters? I myself watch movies and say, I'm going to be every character. I'm going to see if I can see from, I, I, have, I have a fun game with myself when I watch movies. I, as, a, as a mindset practice, I go, can I identify... With different characters. Heck, even when there's like the, the killer or the beast things, I'm like, well, maybe I'll be one of those, right? What's the perspective of this and the angles and why? Okay, now I'm going to move over to the director. Now I'm going to move over to the writer. Now I'm going to move over and, and have a whole perspective on that. That can be a like, way too in-depth for a lot of people. They're like, okay, are you really you go through all that? I have a busy mind. So I had to really, really practice mindset training on a completely different level because I have such a busy mind. I had to see things from every perspective and every angle so that I could truly understand who I was because 
my emotions were very difficult to deal with. So I know that going through these things can actually work. And I know from, I know it's possible for anyone because I've done it. I've been through it. So I know. And I've only lived through, I've, well, I've lived through a ton of trauma. So I know that these methods work. But it depends on you and how much will, work you're willing to do. So I, I'm going to ask you, how committed are you to yourself to learn how to deal with your own emis- difficult emotions? How committed are you to yourself to learn how to deal with your difficult emotions? I guess that's your challenge. Mm-hmm.